Hey, it's Mr. Lunesky with Unit 6, uh, Section 1, Ratios and Proportions. So we're going to get started uh, talking a lot about proportions in this unit. Um, we're going to do a little refresh here from algebra. Um, part of this unit is going to deal with uh, simplifying radicals, and part of the next unit, do a little bit of simplifying radicals. Um, something that you did in algebra, uh, just as a reminder, we had these numbers called perfect squares. So here's a list of the perfect squares. This basically meant, uh, you know, four is a perfect square because it's two to the power of two. Um, and, you know, 25 is five to the power of two. So all of these numbers up here are perfect squares. Um, so to simplify a radical, we can use our calculators, but the idea is that we don't want to give a decimal answer. Uh, so on our calculator, if we typed in the square root of 36, the calculator would tell us that that is six. Um, however, on our calculators, if we typed in the square root of 12, we're going to get some decima uh, decimesimal. We're going to get a messy decimal. What am I saying? Um, get something like 3.46. The idea is we don't want to give it as a decimal answer. We want to give it in radical form. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to look for a perfect square factor. What two numbers multiply together to equal 12, where one of those factors is a perfect square. Um, so the factors of 12 are 4 times 3. So you might be thinking, like, well, what about 6 and 2? The idea is that 6 and 2 aren't in this list. We want to find one number that is in this list. Um, so 4 and 3. So the idea is one of these radicals will simplify, one of them will not. So the square root of 4 simplifies to 2, and then the square root of 3 does not simplify, so it just stays like that. And this is called simplest radical form. Uh, so for the next one, the square root of 72. So some perfect square factors that come to mind for that is 9 times 8. So 9 is my perfect square. It's in this list. 8 is not. Um, the square root of 9 is 3. But the square root of 8 I can actually simplify further because it has a perfect square factor of 4. And then 2 is the one that doesn't simplify. So here I can say, oh, square root of 4 is 2, and then 3 times 2 is 6. So this is the simplified version of that. Now you may say to yourself, well, Mr. Luneski, I did that, and I thought, hey, the square root of 36 and the square root of 2. And the square root of 36 is just 6, and then, hey, we get that same answer, but we get there a little bit quicker. So the idea is you always want to look for the largest perfect square factor. So 9 is a perfect square factor, and so is 36, but since 36 is bigger, that gets us our answer a little bit quicker. Yeah. All right, a um, little more algebra refresher here. Uh, we're dealing a lot with proportions, so we're going to talk about how do I simplify or solve for x when it's in a proportion like this. So a proportion is when we're setting two fractions equal to each other, sort of doing a little comparison. Um, and so how do we solve? We solve using cross multiplication. Um, so we're going to cross multiply here and solve for x. So when I cross multiply, uh, 35 times x is 35x. Don't forget the equal sign. I always see students um, forgetting to put the equal sign there. 8 times 140 um, gives me an answer of, I forget, let me look. Uh, 8 times 140 is 1,120. Uh, and then from here we just solve for x. So multi or divide both sides by 37. Or 35, what am I saying? Uh, 35, and we get an answer of x equals 32. So that's just a little cross multiplying. Um, a ratio is when we have two numbers, x and y, and we can write them a couple of different ways. Most common way that we write a ratio uh, is either comparing the two numbers with that colon uh, or writing them as a fraction. Um, so we're going to do a lot of simplifying ratios here. So if I uh, was comparing 20 miles to 5 miles, um, the idea is that we always need the comparison. So both of these numbers are divisible by 5. Um, so when I divide both numbers by 5, I get 4 miles, but I don't just leave it like that. I need to say 4 miles for every 1 mile. Um, and that's the comparison or the simplified ratio. Same thing here. I know I can simplify this fraction, um, but you don't just eliminate the 12. There has to be a 1 there. So both numbers are 
um, divisible by 12. And notice, even though we have different um, units here, feet and inches, that's okay. Um, can we start talking about scale factors and maps and stuff? Um, you know, we often have things that are converted for inches to miles or inches to feet. Um, a word problem common that you may have seen in algebra is the ratio of boys to girls at Rockridge is uh, 2 to 3, respectively. The word respectively just means that the two goes with the first thing mentioned, boys, three goes with the second thing mentioned, girls. Um, so it says if there are, are 344 boys at Rockridge, how many girls are there? So I think it's always helpful to write out sort of our comparison, boy to girl. Um, so we would say two to three. And then so boy is in the numerator. So we put the 344 in the numerator and then we put the x in the denominator. So this looks very similar to the problem that we were just looking at. So cross multiply and solve. Two times x is two x. Um, three times 344, don't forget our equal sign, is 1032. Divide both sides by two, and we get that x is 516. So we would say that there are 516 girls. Um, so these are just some properties of proportions. Basically if I have um, A divided by B is equal to C divided by D, I'm allowed to um, take the reciprocals of those fractions, meaning I flip them. So instead of A over B, I have B over A. Uh, and if you take a look here, I can sort of cross multiply these things. Um, so B times C is BC and a times d is ad and even though this looks a little bit different when I cross multiply I still get bc and ad um, so I'm allowed to flip the fractions completely if you take a look at this one all I did was I switched um, b and c they kinda switch places and if I cross multiply I still get the same thing uh, and then this one's a little bit tricky the idea is if I have a over b equals c over d I'm allowed to add the denominator to the numerator and it actually makes them uh, the same. Uh, so here's another problem where we're looking at uh, two triangles uh, that are in a ratio. So side AC is in a ratio to AB with a ratio of three to five. Um, so I'm gonna say three to five, I'm gonna write it as a fraction. Um, so AC is in the numerator, so I'll put 39 up top and then AB is in the denominator, so I'll put that here. And then again, we just cross multiply and solve. So um, tricky thing here is when we cross multiply, we need to make sure that we are sort of distributing um, the three to both terms. So we're sort of multiplying it by five X uh, plus 10. Um, five times 39 is equal to 195. Uh, when I distribute the 3 here and here, I get 15x plus 30 is equal to 195. Subtract 30 from both sides. I get 165, and then I divide both sides by 15, and that gives me that x is equal to 11. So that's my answer for that. Uh, problems called extended ratio problems. It says that the measure of the angles of a triangle, so the angles of a triangle, what you should recall, always equal 180 degrees, the three angles. So it says that the three angles are in the ratio of one to two to three, and they want us to find the measure of the angles. So the idea is that we don't know what the measures of the angles are. The angles aren't one, two, and three, but they're in a ratio of one, two, and three. So if we basically add an x at the end of all of these, we sort of get this. We get 1x plus 2x plus 3x, and we're going to set that equal to 180 because we know that the three angles have to add up to 180 because it's a triangle. Um, and so when I simplify and combine like terms here, I get 6x equals 180, and when I divide by 6, I get that x is equal to 30. So the problem wants us to find the measure of the angles. So all we have to do now is substitute the x into each of these individual things here. Um, so obviously my first angle is gonna be 30, because x is just one x. Uh, two times 30 would be 60, 
and then 3 times 30 would be 90. So the three angles of that triangle would be 30, 60, and 90 degrees. Um, a problem very similar to one that I did earlier is a ratio. Instead of giving you just two sides, I actually gave you three sides. So when I give you the option of picking three sides, you get to pick any two that you want to work with. Um, so I have a ratio of 5 to 4 to 2. Um, so AC has the ratio 5, um, BC has a ratio 4, and AB has the ratio of 2. Um, so you can pick any two sides that you want to work with. I'll work with the 5 and the 2. So I'll say 5 over 2. So use the numbers and then use the expressions that are on the triangle. So if I started with the 5, I need to start with the 2x plus 6. And then here I'll end with the uh, 2x. And now again, just like we've been doing, cross multiply and solve. So 5 times 2x is 10x distribute the 2 to each of those so that gives me 4x plus 12 again I'm multiplying 2 times 2x and 2 times 6 um, and I'll just simplify and solve subtract 4x equals 12 divide both sides by 6 we get x is equal to 2 and now we're just gonna fill in and solve for all the sides so if x equals 2 side a b 2 times 2 is 4 side b c 5 times 2 is 10 10 minus 2 is 8. Inside AC, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. So the three sides are 4, 8, and 10. And then the last problem that we have here is perimeters. If I said that the ratio of the length of the width of a rectangle is 4 to 3. So I think it's a wonderful idea to draw a rectangle. Kind of like the triangle problem, we don't know that the sides are 4 and 3 but we know that they're in a ratio of four to three. So we're gonna slap an X on each of those. Hopefully you know that in a rectangle, the opposite sides are the same. So if this is four X, that's four X. If this is three X, that's three X. Perimeter means that we are adding all the sides. So all I'm gonna do is just sort of make a big expression here. It says, or a big equation, uh, four X plus three X plus four X plus three X go around the rectangle and I'm gonna say that that equals 49 um, and just like we did with the triangle problem we're going to simplify and solve here um, and so I end up getting 14 X equals 49 um, when I solve for X here I get X equals 3.5 uh oh decimal again that's fine uh, the problem does want us to find the width though so again if it says ratio of length to width <clears throat> that means that this 4 went with the length, the 3 went with the width. So if I have to solve for the width, I'm going to substitute 3.5 in for x here. So 3 times 3.5 gives me a width of 10.5. And what are our units? Our units are feet. All right, that is it for 6.1. Thank you for watching. I know it. And now you do too.